The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The Foundation of Heart Grant is brought to you by Alive, Commonwealth Bank, J.S. Johnson, Mobile Garage Technologies, Rev Bahamas, Ron's Electric Motors, and Wendy's. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Howard Grant and the Foundation right here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. So wonderful to be in your company today. It is a wild day for me. <laughs> I might as well tell you the truth. I'm right here shaking my baby. She didn't feel too well, but we're still going to be able to jam and have an absolutely wonderful show. First part of the show today, we want to be able to kind of open the lines to really be able to dialogue with you about what's been happening over the few days. And second part, we're supposed to have my good friends, the Rashes coming through, um, um, Priest Blyden is, I'm sorry, um, Priest Rittman. I keep Priest Blyden. Priest Rittman is supposed to be coming through today. So uh, we're looking forward to having those kind of a conversation with you. But there's a lot of things that's kind of popped up over the past few days. I want to talk about it. Yesterday we went in uh, significantly. I got some calls. <laughs> I got some calls after the show. Howard, why you do things like that? I said, no, I, I think it's fair to be able to have a very transparent conversation about where we are and where we're going in the nation. And I'm um, um, understanding that uh, those kind of a mine, uh, those landmines that's been planted, it's, you know, if we know where it is, if we know the, the structure that exists thereof, then we don't step into it again. And that's all this is. And that's all the conversation was, being able to be very clear and transparent in our position and understanding that we can no longer step into that kind of a space. Now, I don't know whether or not this is just fate or the way that things are, but uh, if we look in the papers today, uh, make sure you pick up your Guardian paper, guys. If you look in your papers today and you look down Tuesday, February 28th, the last day of the month, actually, and you're going to see there in the corner on the right-hand side, SANS, internal strife squabbling, hurting the FNM. Now, if you read this, the, the information, if you read the story, uh, I thought it was peculiar Listen, listen, in the spirit of decency and in order, I thought it was rather peculiar that we had someone emerge from the, from the back, from the rear, uh, someone who was supposed to be at the forefront of the conversation, navigating it, being able to, you know, uh, intercede on behalf of those, on behalf of the constitution of the organization and being able to say, this is the direction that we should take. Talk to me. Let's be very clear. And what do we see? We see him emerging from the back and being able to say, none of this can help anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. Let's talk about this, guys. I want to talk about these particular things because the truth is, uh, you know, I got a call yesterday. They said, Sans couldn't win nothing without Minis. And we read the text yesterday. And now we're seeing these things because uh, we heard two sides of the story in some way. We heard Minis' side. We heard uh, Michael Pintard's side, but we have yet to hear from those that still aspire to, to move towards leadership based upon the allegations, based upon the social speculation. It seems as though Pintard is kind of nestled in this position to move towards that. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to let you call in. You know the numbers to call, 323-6232, 325 
323-425-4259. Or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. Listen, man, I want to talk very clear about these particular things. I also read the uh, the article, PM Pledges Humane Approach in Shanti Towns. This is wild to me. Let me tell you why it's wild. This is the third time we've heard someone take on a different position. Now, I am familiar with this as it relates to the Christie administration. Talk to me. Someone talk to me. Tell me the truth. I'm used to seeing this sort of uh, taking a strong position for yourself in the Christie administration. We've seen Dr. Sands in his particular capacity speak up and on behalf of the body government, right? The cabinet itself during his time as Minister of Health, and we know where that led him. But under the Christie administration, we often saw people taking, and more specifically, Fred Mitchell, taking a strategic position to speak, not necessarily contrary, but sometimes yielding their own opinions, and not necessarily that of the body of cabinet, the collective. And now we're seeing it again today. Right? Let's, look at, let's see if we can look at the papers yesterday. The papers on Friday, February 24th. Guardian paper, Friday, February 24th. PM changes tone to suit his audience. Watson explains that Davis' shift in discussing Shanty Town's issue. Press Secretary, and this is Friday. Press Secretariat in the office of the Prime Minister Clint defended the Prime Minister's change in tone on how the government intends to deal with the residents living in the Shanty Town, saying that the Prime Minister is eloquent and smart enough to know which tone to present based on his audience. The Prime Minister audience never change. It never changes. The Prime Minister, while he's speaking to the nation, he's speaking to the world. There should be a sense of consistency in his speech, in his tone, in his disposition, as he presents himself. Why? We no longer live in 1967. This isn't 1954, where you can be able to manipulate what is being written. The former prime minister knows that oh so well. Even as he goes to sign the Oban deal. Uh, without saying a word, we could identify something untowards happening in this room. Everything is being picked up instantaneously. That's what we're seeing. And so when Clint comes on to talk about the prime minister's tone uh, is to suit his audience. His audience is the world. We're the first recipients, but that information is going out to the entire world. The prime minister in his capacity as the chairman of the 44th uh, CARICOM meeting had a different tone. Most definitely he did. And so when we come back here again and read the newspapers this morning, and I thought this was a peculiar thing, the Prime Minister's position states that I've never changed my tone. Let's see if we can be able to find that, right? During the National Address last week, Davis uh, put the Chantytown residents on notice that they need to find alternative, alternative housing. However, two days earlier, the Prime Minister took a gentler tone during the 44th CARICOM Heads of Government meetings, saying that the government is concerned about uh, evicting Chantytown residents and leaving them homeless. This is, this is peculiar. It is. It is. Listen. I am of the opinion, and I want you guys to join in the conversation. I'm of the opinion that there should be a sense of consistency in this. There should be a sense of consistency here. The Prime Minister's position should remain committed to the Bahamian people. If we go deeper into the story, I thought it was peculiar. I want to read a little piece here for you. Just a little piece. He says, as I said in church, and this is in the Guardian newspaper today, um, um, Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. This is on A5. You can be able to read this, right? Somebody texted me, said, Clint is out of control. Let's be able to read this, right? As I said in church the other day, I'm reminded that when I was in Sunday school, we sang the song, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red, yellow, black, or white. They are all precious in his sight. This is the prime minister, right? 
So we all are and have to, in dealing with the people, appreciate that we are all of the human race. That's not pandering. That's acknowledging who we are as a people without compromising our own sovereignty and protecting the interests of our people in our jurisdiction. That is Bahamians. Now, let's go a little further. Watch this. They will always be first. I suppose that he's talking about the Bahamians. They will always be first in my books. And we are, as it were, willing to accept that migration will be part of our country's history. But we do so within the means of our law. Bananas. This is conflicting. This is conflicting for me. I don't know what your position is on it. I know that we can be rebel rousers and have a decisive position to be able to present to people. Um, and if there is this idea that people are segregated, that we can say one thing to a certain group of people here and say something else to a group of people there, then we see the con the, where this actually collides. This is an issue for me because Lincoln being in his particular capacity, his grouping and all others, fringe organizations, and even those within political organizations that support this administration, even those within the PLP, carry this sentiment that we must do something as it relates to illegal migration or what many are calling irregular migration now. Let's shoot straight. Let's shoot straight with the thing. And in the midst of this entire thing that's happening, the prime minister, I don't want to say that he, I, I really don't want to say that about, you, you remember what Bush told Kerry? He's a flip-flopper. You cannot be on the fence with this issue. Either we're going to deal with this head on and rectify the issues for the next generation of Bahamians, or we're going to be gentle and watch our country be ran over by numbers that we can't even measure. Is it only me or I'm seeing more and more? Because guess what? We take the same route every day. I do. I don't take the scenic route to go to work in the morning. I don't. And on that route, dropping the kids to school, dropping the wife off, doing all these particular things, I'm seeing new faces pop up. And what I mean by that is, maybe I've never seen these people before, but it feels too new. That even at this age, you haven't amalgamated to the speech, to our language. You're still rich in your Creole. Sir, you just reach. You just reach. You're a teenager. You're a young adult. And you're speaking. You do not know English. You are just, you've just arrived here. Our prime minister is taking, in my view, a softer approach when dealing with this immigration matter. This is not me saying, take all gloves off. This is not me saying, eradicate the concept entirely of humanity. This is me saying, you cannot say sovereignty and with the same tongue say acceptance. You cannot. For me, that's a contradiction. Either we have sovereignty and autonomy to make a decision in accordance to rules and regulations that govern this jurisdiction and others, or we continue to be able to kind of let go and let God. Where are we on the matter? 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259 or hit me up on the text 422-4796. Let me take a call. A call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, my brother. How this you doing? This illegal immigration thing is a case of the tail wagging the dog. The dog is not wagging the tail. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a case in point. I come down Calpen Road every morning. Okay. Me too. Between, oh, so... You know what, I, I mean you on the same bench. People standing out there have no Hold on. But the thing, 
expands almost by the week. Talk to me. Let's be yes. very clear. They have no fear of the immigrants. And all of them get on papers for farming now. Now, Because I think they give out papers basically for farming. They're all masons and contractors who are looking for work. Hoping somebody come by and pick them up. Mm-hmm. And so they stand there. Because I guess that's where the pickup is. But every morning, it hurts my heart to see how they congregate and have no fear of our authorities coming to say, pick up the one who just even reach. Let's say all of them got papers, but one in the bunch, they hiding in the bunch, <laughs> and he don't have to worry. Listen, I don't believe 18, 19, 20 years old in this country that you should trying to be fumbling to actually communicate. Uh, you cannot convince me that you've lived here your entire life. You cannot. And, uh, and listen, you know what I see now, too? They're walking down the road. and You can tell the set who just reached. Because they're wearing these tight jeans, tight shirts. And they're trying to blend, but they look so awkward. I don't know if you noticed this. You can tell they just reached. Because they, their dress standard is different from the regular boys. Mm-hmm. And they're walking down the main road. And not a uh, police or immigration officer is in place. Mm-hmm. To check this situation. That's why they come because, you know, they tell me they say we stupid people. That's what they say about us? Yeah, we stupid people. Them and the Chinese, they, they say we stupid people. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about if we and That's we how stupid. they talk about us when they're among themselves. Wow. We stupid people. We wow. got it too good. Wow. Wow. I appreciate and, you. Go ahead. Remember. And uh, this thing with them just congregating on the side of the road, it irks me to see how they have no fear. I wouldn't go to America and start up without my papers. As free as I got free as. <laughs> I agree with you, my brother. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your telephone call. I hope man. they listen to I hope they are. I don't know whether or not they're concerned about, you know, our position. Because uh, if no one's doing anything about it, if no one's out here and uh, trying to rectify this issue, feverishly trying to identify how do we... How do we curb this? How do we prepare ourselves and put ourselves in the position to be able to move towards? All I'm seeing is this kind of double speech coming out of the cabinet. By extension, Clint Watson in his particular capacity as um, uh, press secretary for the office of the prime minister is an extension of uh, sort of the policy or the structure what exists within the cabinet of the Bahamas. So if he's coming out here and said that the prime minister is taking a, set, a, a softer tune, so you're saying to me that Clint Watson, in his capacity, is writing on behalf of the prime minister, and the prime minister have to come back and say, that's not so? That's not so? Clint was wrong? Is that what you're saying? Let's read this paper. So it says on Monday, February 27th, which was yesterday, Mitchell, what more do you want us to do on immigration? That's the question mark. Progressive liberal chairman... Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell warned party supporters during the PLP meeting last week not to be distracted by the narrative of some political posturers that the Bahamas is, is experiencing an immigration crisis. There's this nav- narrative, this is what he says, and we have to be careful how we adopt this narrative, and it's based on what I think is a false premise. Uh, Mitchell said during the party's National Central Council meeting last week Wednesday, you have this man and his partner, and I call them the Bobsy twins, twits, who are out there wiping up, whipping up hysteria in the population about some people who are supposedly taking over our country. I assure you, that there is a crisis in Haiti. There is no crisis in Nassau. This is bananas. This is bananas. Because the prime minister is indicating something entirely contrary to what we're hearing, Fred Mitchell and his capacity, as both a cabinet minister, because he is around the table, the decision-making table for the country in the direction that we should go. He's there. He exists there. He's in that space. He contributes in that. And he also sits in his capacity as chairman of the organization. He is in the inner circle of both the administration and his political organization. And our prime minister has shifted his tone. 
He has. Somebody tell me contrary. Tell me otherwise. A few weeks ago, some time ago, there wasn't a crisis, an immigration crisis. Now there was a crisis. He shifted his tone. He's taken on these positions. Let's be very clear about where we are and what we're talking about. Let's take a next telephone call. Calling on the line with us live. Go ahead. How you doing? Hello? Hey, how you doing, my brother? Go ahead. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, I think you use uh, the right word, hysteria, you know, because we, they, over the years, we have been dabbling with this immigration crisis. I wouldn't even say immigration well, crisis. Well, you can't say dabbling and immigration together. Dabbling sounds no. like over here. You need to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah dabbling. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we say Asian crisis, man. Let's use the word Asian because when we speak, you know, it's been taught. It's been, it's been, it's a public relations nightmare when we speak to immigration and the only grouping of people are, that comes up is Asian. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's a fixture. The gentleman just call and say, you see them stand on the road like they're comfortable. I see them every I, I single comfortable morning. When I get my, I comfortable when I got my work permit. I come outside my, uh, where I live. I got my work permit. Um, I live on the western end. I see the Peruvians and the Mexicans. Everyone comfortable going to work, down on the side or waiting on the truck to pick them up. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And they they in mass numbers around here. Yeah, they you are. See the Chinese daily in they mass are. numbers. I mean... You know, but this was um, a scene that I saw mm-hmm. years ago. This is the scene that I would have seen years ago in the morning when Bahamian persons would have left Eight Mile Rock, would have been leaving uh, Baintown, Grand Town to go to the construction mm-hmm. jobs. That shift. You, 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 you're a Freeport guy, right? From Eight Mile Rock. Right. So you understand that, you know, you know, you know we don't like that. You know, Eight Mile Rock was a Jazzy dad. Yeah. Right. You understand that when they build the, free, the city of Freeport, and they brought in Jamaicans and Haitians. You they know, brought, they were on work permit. Yeah, and Turks Islanders also. Turks Islanders are Turks Islanders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we had, we had this migration um, um, issue, and, it's not, and I didn't say legal immigration issue. We had a migration issue where when we were, when we, before independence, before, during majority rule, the city of Freeport, they were given work permits out. Because those, those not, not the Haitians, but those people from um, the, the Caribbean were able to flow through. Mm-hmm. And come here for work, and that's mm-hmm. a part of history. But like, especially Jamaicans, we didn't, we don't get, you know, because we were under the British. You could have flown from a different um, British colony to the land. So tell me this: What do you think? Has the Prime Minister taken on a different approach in terms of his tone? Is he is he double speaking, or you think he's he, there's a sense of consistency? We don't understand. I don't think behemoths. I, I don't want to say behemoths. Some of us don't understand. Um, um, the politics involved in terms of not just local politics, international politics. You mm-hmm. can't be a part of an international community. And, you know, we have this major crisis in the, in this region. And you just had CAC on here. You know? And we, we we will applaud him and we would jump up and down if he say he's putting everybody back on the plane and sending them back and we can break down all the shanty um, houses, shanty towns. And we we be happy when, he, when when they do that type of thing. Right, but we don't understand the implications for us in the international community when statements like that and, and actions like that take place. When you sign on to human rights treaties and stuff, there's a process. Like he says, it's, it, and let's be honest, it's a process. Mm-hmm. Yes, we and, and um, um, we have a. Not, I wouldn't say a crisis. Yes, we have a uh, issue where we have to to, to 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 make the correct steps in correcting the issue, and that's something that wasn't created overnight. So it's going to take time. For us, if we're serious, that's the first, uh, if we're serious, it's going to take time to start to rectify the problem. And the problem don't start with people coming on the boat. The problem starts with us being real as behemoths to understand that we have people who are coming here and they're working, so they need jobs. So obviously somebody's supplying the jobs, right? Whether it's us as behemoths doing it or what we call the second home owners that have second homes here, and looking for cheap labor. And we got to have that honest conversation also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is the, uh, uh, a legal immigrant is not going to go to a place settle if there isn't any work. And let's be real about that. So where are these people getting the jobs from? Even down to where they're living, right? They, it's been known that when they did the 2013 Shantytown report, Crown land leased to Bahamians for farming. Are you taking it out and subleasing it to, 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 to illegal immigrants or, or legal immigrants? So Bill Housen. So what are we going to do about that? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's steps yeah. we have to take. 
in order to get to the bigger problem of people coming in illegal, illegally and residing. Yeah. I appreciate your telephone okay, call, man. my brother. Thank you so very kindly for contributing um, uh, and putting it down like that. Uh, but I just have to be, shoot straight. Uh, you know, why I make mention of the fact that we're no longer in the 1950s or 60s is because information is accessible to all. And we in this space have a responsibility for to identify that what's being said about our country and what's being coming out of our, com our country. There needs to be a sense of consistency. And when we look for this information, there seems to be double tone. Now, we many of us who may have that kind of uh, that savvy, that understanding from a media perspective of how to articulate and understanding the audiences thereof, this is still information about our country. But this is how I feel. The fact of the matter is, is that our country, our politicians, have not been as transparent and forthcoming over the time with the Bahamian citizens. So in the event that we see double speech or it's presumed or perceived to be double speech. We know we don't know which way to kind of lean. Is this, you know, more true if he's saying it to us, or does he mean what he's saying to the international community? I know he has to say that because of our treaties, because of our position, because of the fact that he's the head of CARICOM or the chairman of the organization, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know and we can deduce those things, but we have to know what will happen on the ground. That's it. That's it. And this proverbial can, that many of the traditional men call a can, has been kicked far down the road. This illegal immigration problem has been swept under the rug in the mud and pigeon peas for far too long. This issue that we've been dealing with for far too long, the chickens have come home to roost. And whilst we're talking, many are getting comfortable. See, no one takes into consideration that Grand Bahamians, Abaconians, or people from Exuma, Exumians, right? Zumans, right? Eleutherans. All these persons never wanted to leave their, the peace of their rock, their island, their space, the familiarity of the environment that they grew in. We all moved for an opportunity to take care of our families. You never consider this. Your consideration is accommodating those persons who are in apparent distress without consideration of the fact that many of us, I can tell you this story, then we can take a commercial break. The hotel transition, right? I told you this before, but let's go through it again. The hotel transition here uh, from Sheridan to Malia, and I was in a strategic position as management, and I was just about to take the course to actually put myself in a position as a Six Stigma. So I started to do that, right? I pursued that, and a Six Stigma would give me an opportunity to go elsewhere around the world working for the Starwood brand. Okay. Boom, the hotel was sold. The transition happened where this Mexican company, this Latin American company, let's be decent, came in. And they spoke Spanish. And so I thought that this meant, wow, okay, I speak Spanish. It's on my resume. I can do it. Boom, boom, boom. I'm in management. I've done these things. I've had experience. At least they should consider me. Their consideration was, this fella know too much. He speaks too much. Because, you know, I was trying to say, hey, listen, um, this, is, this is not how we do things. This is how we do things. And that kind of put a target on my back. And in the midst of putting a target on my back, this woman gave me they called me to human resources. I thought this was the day I was going to get informed that we're considering you for this, this, and this. I, honest to God, I promise you, anyone from the hotel could tell you how they lie. I was always, like, astute and committed myself to the work that I did. They called me to the office and gave me a letter as a front office manager, a redundancy letter. The woman, a Mexican woman whose work permit was the assistant in finance sat in the capacity as a human resource director and gave me a letter of a redundancy. It blew my mind. So I said, who wrote this? She said, okay, Howard, I know that this is the first time that we're talking, uh, pero I want you to understand uh, we're trying to take, we're going to take good care of you. So I said to her, I said, listen, ma'am, 
let me, let, me, let me shoot straight with you. Okay, so the devil showed up in the room. Let's just be clear. The devil showed up in the room. Now, this is Howard Grant who moved in 2012 after the election where I presented myself as a DNA candidate and was rejected by the FNMs that existed in that space. I couldn't find anything to do in Grand Bahama at that time. I left in search of an opportunity to take care of my family. Sat in front of this woman a year in, the first less than 60 days, less than 38 days as an employee of that property. I won manager of the quarter. I came on February, on November 12th. By December 12th, I was manager of the quarter. Watch me, diligent at my thing. None of this was considered. These people give me a check. They give me a, a credit card for $500. How I do all this. I train in people. I know everybody on the property in less than a month. This is how I always do my thing. The woman come here and slide me a redundancy letter. I think we, we, we decided to go in different ways. So I said, I don't know who wrote this letter, but you and them are both stupid. This is what I tell the woman. I shoot you straight with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm getting somewhere with this illegal immigration. I said, when you were in Mexico, and this is because the devil was in the room, there was an indecency showed up. I said, when you were in Mexico, sleeping on your twin bed with your five cousins, and every night you wake up smelling rank because one of your cousins had a bladder problem, and you pray to Jesus, deals for one day to leave your country to send money back and get something here. I said, I was living in Grand Bahama taking care of my family. I said, so the economy shifted for the world, and I'm now in Nassau, moving within my own country, and doing what I do best. And you gave me a letter of redundancy as a front office manager, not even understanding you have to shut down the whole front office. How can you make a front office manager's position redundant? I say, I'm coming to work tomorrow. My point to you is, is that the aspirations externally while it's rich and they keep clamoring to get at our borders, the fact of the matter is, is that there are a great deal of Bahamians who need jobs now, who are looking to take care of their families here now. And this soft tone and approach of what needs to be done with illegal immigration doesn't consider the fact that there are Bahamians who cannot pay Commonwealth Bank now. There are Bahamians who owe Scotia Bank now. There are behemoths who cars are being taken from them because they cannot afford it anymore because the economy has shifted significantly and our government continues to identify how we can be able to be casual, cordial, politically correct with the external and hope to God that they can fix it before the next general election. Let's talk about this thing. Let's be transparent about this thing because behemoths are hurting. And every day you see a salty face sh uh, uh, pop up. That's something that goes back into the, the, the Haitian economy from remittance. There are certain places don't even need to do advertisement with us because their product speaks for itself. We can send money to your place. Well, let's shoot straight and have a very clear conversation that this softer tone cannot be where we stand in our constitution. Let's take this quick commercial break, guys, and be right back after this. Carifta is almost here, and the live has partnered with TCL for you to capture gold at the 2023 Carifta Games. Switch to Alive and get a free TCL 30 Plus or TCL 30 SE on select Alive postpaid plans to share pictures and videos of our Bahamian athletes as they hit the tracks to win gold. Visit your nearest Alive store or mobile van location and come gold with us at the 2023 Carifta Games. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. 
But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Guardian Radio and the Foundation are on the move. Bahamas, this one's for you. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Every Thursday, the Foundation with Howard Grant will highlight small businesses throughout the country, far and wide. Your products, services, prices, and personality. We want to hear it all. Get your 30 or 60 second advertisement heard on air at a fraction of the cost. We here at the Foundation understand the times and don't want you to be left behind. With Guardian Radio, you reach your specific demographic and it is unmatched. We reach thousands daily. Get your products off the shelf and your services in their hearts. Small Business Thursdays with the Foundation only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. For more information, call 302-2300 or the Help Me Howard line at 827-0111. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Get your business moving today. Greetings, allow me to introduce myself. I am the Yo, Lime Crunch Chicken Sandwich from Wendy's. And I have a little of everything. Avocado, taco mayo, pickles, and crunchy tortillas on top of a delicious breaded chicken filet. Yes, the new Wendy's Tortilla Lime Crunch Chicken Sandwich has as many flavor personalities. Try it today at your Wendy's where we are different inside and out. Fidelity, we're good for you. Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customers' payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. Fidelity, we're good for you. <laughs> Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, the foundation with Howard Grant really chopping it down. The lines are wide open today. If you want to be a part of the conversation, 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259, or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. We just shooting straight today. That's all I want to do. I just want to hit you right between your eye and let you know that this is not a game, okay? This is a real thing. There are families, listen to me, I keep trying to explain this to you. I don't think you understand. My wife and I own several pieces of property in Grand Bahama. I own acres of property in Eight Mile Rock, which is my homestead, which is generational property, which has been bequeathed, rather, to me, I'm a part of the lineage, and so this is my property. I hear in Nassau scratching my head every Jesus day, renting, trying to figure out how can I afford to live here. Man, stop playing games. You always play too much, okay? You're around here trying to be politically correct and doing all the right things. You're walking around on these eggshells and trying to say the right words. But the fact of the matter is, is that many of us are crying in the evening, asking Jesus Christ how, how and why we live in like this. And every day, these fellas bring in one brick a day, one block a day from their job site, one. One two by four a day from their job site. And building homes on a land that is ours. Should we relentlessly genuflect to that? Is there any other tone to take? With the frustration that exists in this country, let's just talk. Stop playing games with the thing. With the rhythm from one political organization to another, not understanding that people are desperate for ownership, desperate for an opportunity to own something in our land that God has given us. 
the national anthem, the pledge. We pledge our allegiance to the flag, to the commonwealth for which it stands. One people united in love and service. Us! These are the declarations that we make. This is the commitment that we make as a, as a people. And none of our governments, FNM, PLP, indifferent, none of the administrations can take a hard, fast tone to rectify this issue that has been looming like a dark cloud over this country for far too long. Let's take a telephone call before we get out of here. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, man. What's up? Uh, you know, here's what it is. Um, I heard you say recently that um, the PM has taken a soft stand. Um, I could disagree with that. He's taking the 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 stance of the ruling class and all governments and previously on this immigration issue. It's nothing new that uh, what he's doing. And we've seen it before. We've heard it before. They talk a good talk and then do nothing. And like uh, Fred um, Smith has been doing all this time, all they had to do was go to the the proper route through the courts and get those things signed, sealed, and delivered. And then they have all the action to do what needs to be done. Now they have that signed, sealed, and delivered, and they're still not doing it. So what does that tell you? That someone else is, is benefiting from all the chaos. So why should the government present do anything when the people who probably pay their, their way into Parliament is pulling the string? Ooh, you're getting deep. I like it, Phyllis. Thank you, my brother. I do appreciate you. 2018 to 2023 is five years. And in that five-year period, this sort of injunction has just been lifted in the courts, in our courts. The former administration was relentlessly having a conversation about this idea for swift justice, this idea to rectify things, this idea for the backlog to be dealt with accordingly. And this, this issue, five years, five years for this administration to come in and try to rectify this issue and still won't give us a day when these particular issues can be rectified. You see, there needs to be a very clear message sent in the midst of all the civil war that's happening in Haiti. There needs to be a clear message. There exists no space for you to lay your head here. They didn't let Jesus Christ in the end. Oh my God, talk to me. Are we supposed to be the recipients of the tribulation that happens around us? Are we? This is modifying our culture, our views, our disposition. Let's take one more telephone call before we get out of here. Call you on the line. Go ahead. Call you on the line. Was, hey. What's happening, man? All is well. What's happening with you? You sound like you weird on the road, man. What happened? I radio. I radio. Oh, well, 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 talk to me, man. Talk to me. <laughs> I radio. You know what I mean? That's it. Um, one thing I like is you use a straight shooter. See, you could dilly dally how it. As, for, as, as as much as you want, but not for as long as you want. Mm -hmm. Now, when people like us on the ground, see, a lot of times, people who got talk shows and platforms, they keep inviting the same set of hyper duty people or people who think they're hyper duty with money and things, and, and, uh, but they're trying to figure out what the hell going on on the ground. The only way you find out what's going on on the ground is come on the ground and you find out from us who are on the ground. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Other than that, the fellas can sell, sell you ice if you live in Eskimo. The fellas up there. Mm -hmm. Now, this divide and conquer thing has been going on from from, from, from the inception with Finland. Mm -hmm. But Finland was more towards the Bahamian people than the rest of these guys was coming with. But that divide and conquer was taught to Finland by Mugabe of Africa. Mm -hmm. Finland didn't enforce it until he felt sick it, 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 later in his career as a politician here. Yeah. To Christie and Ingram, because remember now, Christie and Ingram was invited to take charge of the free national movement by Wallace with feeling them many times, you know. But Christie them was saying, no, baby, it's PLB. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until Finland uh, told them, Perry, you come back to the PLB, Ingram, you go to the free national movement. And between the two, you all, you all have the Bahamian people exactly where you all want them. Mm -hmm. And that is what's happening today. Unfortunately, though, for the politicians, 
they played that card, that trump card, too long, and it has now gotten out of hand with some of the way said of, of unruly people in the Caribbean, My God. which is the Haitians. Because the Jamaicans are here in, in, in large numbers, you know, but you don't see them like that unless it's a sports day and you look on the eastern side of the stadium. You don't see them like the Haitians and stuff like that. So this has been taught to the Bahamians a long time ago. And the Bahamians were just waking up from the lull, the long lull they was, well, was asleep. Now, another thing is, uh, I think the fellow who called us back was talking about something about Bahamians. I can't remember exactly what it was. Out. Can you remember? No, I can't remember what you said. Go ahead and, and he, give me it. It'll jog my huh? memory. Go ahead and talk about what you said. Now. It'll jog my memory. Yeah, I think I think he was saying something about Bahamian. Well, anyway, I, 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 I can't remember that right now, but it is almost, for this country, it is almost too late. Ooh, to start this is too time. much? Is it too late? That's crazy. It is almost too late. Wow. Uh, he was saying something. Oh, I think he was saying something about Bahamian uh, facilitating this. And I really get tired to a certain extent by hearing everybody say that. At first, yes, way back in the day, Bahamian but it ain't facilitated change. a couple if, dollars. If the fellas are coming here on a day-to-day huh? basis, if the fellas are coming here weekly, monthly, yearly, on a day-to-day basis, someone got to be paying some bill somewhere. Someone, listen, yes. somebody got to yes. be facilitating it. Yes, but let's call it like what Howard said, let's shoot straight. Maybe in that first, when the indigenous or the, the more, uh, the poor persons that uh, well, who came in and they were like Bahamian, they may have facilitated it for a couple of dollars. However, since we allowed it to run on so long, now the descendants of those persons have now infiltrated. Wow. They call themselves Bahamian of Haitian descent or Jamaican descent. They, I have some friends that rushed me in the Valley Boy. I never know there was a Haitian descent until sometime recently. All of us grew up together, you know. My God. But they now embolden. And whenever a new Haitian comes, if you ask them to come do something else that you know they could have done a long time, they just bring the brand what new daddy Haitian say, you say. Your daddy say, yeah, when you get older, your daddy say, oh, you feel you're straight, hey? You feel it straight now. They can't speak a word of English, <laughs> wow. but they do the translation for you and those are the Bahamians that are facilitating them. Wow. Not really the indigenous Bahamians, you know. Yeah. But I can say this that I go in. I yeah. see one thing that's brewing with Philip Brave Davis and other than me saying it ain't going to be the Haitians or the, the most of the males that changed this election. You know, I watch these women closely. They kicked out that woman the other day, a Bahamian girl, Ooh. police. They, 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 they dragged that old Bahamian woman. Woo. They threw that woman, the Bahamian woman, off the curry off her land. That they break up that woman. That, that's right? another conversation we have to have because I want to exactly. talk about women and their strength and understanding exactly. that they have the power to change all this stuff. I thank you for your telephone call. It's 1 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to stop right here, uh, take a break for the news, and get back into this conversation. I'm supposed to have um, uh, Priest Rittman coming to the studio today to talk about reparations, to talk about um, um, the uh, an anniversary that they're supposed to be celebrating. Um, I haven't gotten any call to say that he's here or not. I don't see him in the studio. So if not, we're going to continue the conversation when we get back, guys. 96.9 FM Radio, The Foundation with Howard Grant. We're going to be right back after this. The Foundation. The Foundation. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Nassau, Bahamas. Fidelity, we're good for you. With so much going on in the world today, only accepting cash at your business can be risky. Let Fidelity offer you and your customers safety, convenience, and the flexibility of a fixed or mobile terminal. Take it with you, on the move and on the go. Because business should never stop. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit us at any of our branches. Fidelity, we're good for 
found a foundation. Found a foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, the foundation with Howard Grant right here on this beautiful Tuesday, really being able to chop it down. I don't see my guys in the studio, so we're back at it. I saw the lines were lit up. Give me a call, 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Or four two two four seven nine six. I like this. I, I like this kind of a conversation between you and I. Um, uh, can we be straight up with each other? Can we be honest? Or if you're gonna hit me with the the sort of uh, talking points and the political malarkey, then I don't know whether or not this is the space that's been created to be able to do that. To to give you that leverage, that room, that podium, that lectern to do that. Not for me. Not for Howard Grant. Because I want to talk about the tribulation that we endured as a 41-year-old man who knows that there are great aspirations to move in a particular direction in this country. Who knows that we offer, I offer so much. I, I, listen, anyone who knows me closely knows that if there is an issue, I sit down and I craft 19 pages, 20 page programs, concepts, ideas, and I put it in certain person's hands. Maybe you hear it. Maybe you don't hear it. But way before Dorian, this is what I've been doing. I'm not one of these persons who just want to come here and pontificate my guts out. I want to talk about national growth and development, and I'm pricked on my side. I, honest to God, I wish I could leave this alone sometimes. I, mean, I can't because I have an obligation to the next generation, to my children, if only. Where's your obligation? This kind of connotation, this concept that exists, that we've accepted, that our former prime minister even spewed and made this uh, sort of uh, declaration into the atmosphere. Huh? That it is what it is, is a lie. It is not what it is. It only is what it is based upon what we see, but that's not the truth of the matter. We need to get to the nitty gritty and talk truth. Speak truth to this power that exists because we're being pushed over a ledge. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, in our family structured environment, we are losing those things that made us uniquely Bahamian. And now to have a conversation about inclusion, uh, listen, and this conversation about inclusion is almost from every arm. Every arm, every sphere and subsection you identify, it's all about inclusion. You watering down who we are. Then if we're going to do that, then just open up the borders. Just forget about the thing. Let's talk about these things. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259 or hit us up on the text 422-4796. Let me read a couple of texts before we can be able to get out of here. I'm, um, I go to the telephone lines. Let me see if I can read one or two, right? Um, good afternoon, Howard. I believe the Honorable, Phil, the Honorable Philip Davis is the chairman of CARICOM because he's the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, which is CARICOM, which is a CARICOM country. If his chairmanship stops him from representing the views and messages of the Bahamians internationally, then he should resign as chairman. Our message on illegal migration should never be watered down or confused internationally. It must be made clear that the Bahamas is for Bahamians. Great show, Howard. All right, let's see if we can read one more text and then go to the telephone lines. It says, Howard, I was troubled when I heard the prime minister said that he has located the employers concerning relocation of the documented Haitian Bahamians in the shanty towns. What about our citizens who are homeless, lost their homes to the banks, and nobody says anything towards our people? These are texts that's coming through. Let's take a telephone call. Call me on the line with his live. Go ahead. Go ahead, call you on the line with his life. Yes, Howard, you can hear me? Yeah, man, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Howard, you definitely is one of the Joshua generation, right? 
But I need I need you to understand that where we where we going in this country right now we going into a paradigm shift, right? Mm -hmm. And let me give you a little example, right? You see what's going on in the boat, um, uh, um, ex all all this establishment when it comes to political parties, right? Mm -hmm. You see what is happening inside both of them today. Okay, right? in what sense? What happening? Um, it's called leadership. Okay, right? It's leadership. Now, you can't make, you may can't not see it clearly now in the PLP, but I can give you one year and tell me what you see, because at the end of, um, of the end of three years in the PLP, um, they um, to, to suggest that um, we going back to the pub to, to the electorate with um, Philip Brave Davis and Hubert Minnis, right? I need you to think about that because um, it's not going to get no better here for, for neither these guys because they didn't prove to the Bayman people, and, right? These parties didn't prove to the Bayman people that they clearly, um, they, first of all, enforcement of law, right, is out of the book when they're dealing with this organization. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the cultural, cultural and, and, and the development of culture, right, that is out the door. I think culture must use the lowest um, 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 when it comes to the of getting um, your, your um, I mean, what they just give to, to these um, ministries. Culture is supposed to be one of the highest um, when it comes to what they could do for the people or culturally every every time, and, you know, because when, once we lose that and we already then lost that simply because all our politicians want us to do is focus on them as they say as they are gods. But I can guarantee you, right back to the first point I made to you, watch this drama play as old Howard. Mm. Watch this play as old, because the, the, the new Bahamas is on the way. He's a part of that generation, too, man. Thank All you, my right. brother. I do appreciate your telephone call. Thank you so much. Let me take the next telephone call. Calling on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, Howard. How you doing? I'm good, man. What's up, Jeff? Uh, right here, boy. Enjoying this conversation today. And must thank you for a very provocative um topics that you are approaching today. How would I identify with you uh, in your salvo when you spoke about your stint in the hospitality, i.e. hotel industry? Yeah. I've seen personally one or two of the things that you try to accomplish, mm -hmm. as you know. And, um, you know, it really saddens my heart to see that Bahamians who were the pioneers, especially in this hem hemisphere, in hospitality, i.e. hotel, the hotel sector, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we had uh, other Caribbean countries who came here to learn how we did things here and then transfer that stuff back to their country. Mm -hmm. But then be relegated now today to see that Bahamians, many of us who are organic Bahamians, as I like to use that term, are, being, are now being denied the right in, in, in participating in a sector where we have served all of our lives. And it isn't because we lack the knowledge, the expertise, or the wherewithal to continue on with with with, with our craft. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a 34 year hotel uh, hotelier, veteran hotelier, and are uh, still full of life. And it's not just me that I'm speaking for now. I'm speaking to many persons who have been in the industry who still wish, perhaps, or desire to 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 re-enter the industry, but being denied that right. So what I'm basically saying is. You know, I think the work permit uh, aspect of this whole thing is a, is a, is a diabolical uh, travesty to the Bahamian people because you talk about cheap labor and everything, but you got Bahamians here whose lives have been turned upside down with, with the increase in taxes and bills. Uh, you know, you got mothers and fathers who still got children off in college and university still yearn to, to make a living, yeah. make a satisfying living. Yeah. And, and yet being denied that right, especially when they have served all, most of their lives in the industry, to be, be denied the right to even participate. Yeah. You know, I asked the question the other day, Howard, does work permits have a time limit on them where a person can be here on a, time, on a work permit and then after they have served X amount of times that they go back home? And I think Sir Linden had something similar in play, and I'll close on this, Whereas, if someone came here even with a specialty, and there were no Bahamians 
at that particular time with that specialty that was needed, then that person coming in on a work permit would be permitted to come and work for X amount of time. I think back then it used to be three years. And with that three years, you would take two payments under the wing. That's the concept. Them that, was the, that was the concept of behemanization. Exactly. That's and the then leave the country. But what they have done here, they have opened the market. There's no time limit on these work permits. People now come here to work, disadvantage the Bahamian worker, and yet expect the Bahamians because to pay these high taxes. I don't understand this. The concept of behemanization has been um, um, superseded. Uh, by a concept that the world has embraced and continues to run towards. That's capitalism. Capitalism has taken its place because uh, there's no longer a concern about who we are as a people. It's let's play nice with those international partners and let's do our best to kind of get this money. And uh, we've left community behind and we continue to be able to erode the hope that exists in those particular spaces. Thank you, my Jeff. I appreciate your telephone call. Uh, so it says, uh, but Bahamians, do, these are texts. Uh, please send me a text, 422 4224796. It says, but Bahamians don't want to do the jobs that Haitians are willing to do. Exclamation mark. This is wild. <laughs> it's, it's a whole exclamation mark at the back of that, right? It says, but Bahamians don't want to do the jobs that the Haitians are willing to do. I got to say it loud because this is strong. It says, what's going to happen? with the new project in Abaco. The Haymans ain't going over there for minimum wage jobs, but the Haitians will, and they will band together and live in the shanty towns because there is no housing in Abaco. If we continue to make excuses why the Haymans ain't going to do something, they ain't going to do it because there's no solutions here. It's only excuses. And where the hell are we going to get with that? Nowhere fast. Stop it. Let's read another one. It says, talk to me, Howard. Uh, Clint is out of control, press, it to, press secretary, and he need to sit still. Uh, the facts of the matter is we cannot afford to take care of two nations, point blank. We are sympathetic towards them, but we must always be Bahamian first. Absolutely. The briefing on an airplane ride is always secure your mask first and then help others. More grace. There's a text that's coming through. Uh, it says, I feel like the prime minister knows that if they proceed with the demolitions, all the human rights people will emerge in full force, including the two Freds, right? Is that Smith and Mitchell? For, it can be Smith. Who's the other Fred that we're talking about, Right? Is it from Scooby-Doo? Which Fred are we talking about? Stop it. Because one Fred has a capacity as both the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chairman of the Free National, I mean, of the Progressive Liberal Party. And we know that Fred Smith may definitely pop his, uh, show up and actually have something to say as along, along those lines. So who knows, we might even get another injunction. Let's take a telephone call. Calling on the line with his live, go ahead. Hey, but how you doing? I'm good, man. What's happening? All right. What's not being talked about, you know, on the other end of this spectrum, right? Yeah. Those persons who come in here on, on weight permits as professionals, you know, in the upper, in the upper echelons of things, right? Mm -hmm. And they run interference for the young Bahamians whose parents have sacrificed to send them off to school. They come back here, and they can't find anything. Now, that's going to be a bigger problem in the future. Now, you made an observation about the wake permit thing, right? But, you know, in speaking with the guys on the ground, there are situations where persons arrive on our shores with NIB number and work permit in hand. And they can't speak a word of English. It gives you an inch, it gives you an, an estimate of how deep the infiltration is in the system itself. Now, Prime Minister Davis may 
say all kinds of things, you know. And like I said before, in six months, we will see where things are. But we, you know, I guess 10 or 15 years from now, when this conversation, if it comes up again, if we don't do something, we will not be having this conversation. Because some of the I things you. say against the, the um, refugees and the migrants, is going to be cast in the area of hate speech. Ooh, I agree now, with you. all those declarations we have signed on to give us a prelude to that. You know, and you know, well, I would, you know, <laughs> you, you know, I, I hope you find a lot of money and you go and open your own hotel <laughs> you, someplace. You in tell me where, where you need me to dig, where the GPS is for a lot of money. I keep sleeping, but listen to me. I don't know how it's too good for it, man. You good for it. <laughs> You all think light-skinned people have money on slacking? <laughs> hey, stop laughing, mate. You think light-skinned people got money on slacking? No, 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 no. no, no. Hey, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Do you hear it? Ten fellas, right? Ten fellas. Okay. Ten thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Go on to the bank. Mm-hmm. Borrow a million dollars. And the sunshine boy was started. Mm-hmm. That can be replicated. Now, until Bahamians are prepared to get together, like the people in the Shadi Islands are getting together, in that same mindset, you know, we don't need nothing, but 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 if we don't build a foundation for our children's children, I like what you're saying. We will have nothing. I get twenty okay. G's. I sell my truck. Let's go. I need nine more fellas. Let's make the thing happen, right? No, 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 no. no, no I'm no, serious. No, no, I'm no, serious. No, no, but five to seven. Five to seven will do. Five to seven? Don't need ten. Okay, okay, okay. I like this. I like what you said. You're a good, decent man, my brother. Yeah. You got 20 Gs? Yeah, man. All right, all right. Listen, uh, leave your number here. I call you. <laughs> so we only need four more after that. We got to go. I, I, well, see, see, I can always sign you. Okay, okay. All right. He was a good, decent man. I appreciate the telephone call, my brother. Thanks so yes, much. Uh, I will read something here. as a text that actually came through. He says, he said, boy, we got to accept the fact that we're only watching the house. The country was built on slave labor, and we won't ever function without it. That is bananas. To believe, listen. Uh, you know, I always liken these conversations to the conver- to the movie Life. You remember Life with uh, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence? You remember that? You ever watch that? You ever watch that? I, I always enjoy this movie, right? I was always fascinated by their love-hate relationship. And they got to this one point, right? You remember when the young white girl got pregnant? And he said, as the pappy, right? You remember that part, right? You remember? That prison never had a gate, it never had walls. There was an invisible gate that existed there that everyone knew that if you pass this point, you are a dead man. Everyone knew that. Everyone knew that if, you're pa- if you run beyond this point, you're going to die. I think that's where we are as a people. I think that that's where our independence exists. Our independence exists with the sort of removal of the fence and the commitment to the monarchy, but it's still there. And many of us, with our political correctness, with our sort of genuflecting to those entities and establishments that exist outside of our space, we continue to be able to walk around, pacing our space, but never moving out to find a real opportunity to make things happen for ourselves. And that's just just wild to me. It's wild that we continue to be able to celebrate this year we're celebrating a jubilee. And we broke. Man, talk to me. I'm not talking about what's happening on paper, what's being pontificated in the House of Assembly, what uh, the political juggernauts are being able to throw back and forth, uh, their political hockey or tennis, right? In the House of Assembly, I'm talking about the sentiment on the ground. Your children could feel that. 
they know mommy and daddy ain't got it. Your children could feel that. You could drive in your car, and as much as this government or any other tries to pave the road, as you look to the next car, you could see that there is a sense in our country, and I don't want to put depression on us, but something's going on. There is a yearning for more. We yearn for more. And whilst we play with this kind of an idea of independence, we don't have access to the things that we want. I could sit here and tell you over the past seven months how much time I've went to, how much banks I went to, how much proposals I've created, and how much time I've been rejected for something that I do every day God said. I could tell you. Howard could tell you. I'm not going to lie to you. I could bring it to you and show you that. And if I'm doing that, how many other persons are being rejected the same way? Looking back and say, oh my God, it was better when the UBP was here. We might as well go back to Egypt. That is what sucks hope out of the environment. Because that's what this concept of independence was to do. It was to infuse in the minds and the hearts of Bahamians that you can do. Every single year since, 50 years, we've been depleted slowly but surely of that hope to do for ourselves. Let's see if we can take one more telephone call before we go to a break. Call you on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, yo, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Thank you. Why are you trying to depress me? I ain't trying to depress you. Honest no, to God. No, no, no. You can't because, you know, at the end of the day, I, you, 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 you have to hold on to, to something. You have to hold on to, to, to something. I remember as a young girl, my cousin and I, we would walk, he wanted a job, right? Mm -hmm. It's like 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. We would walk from one end of Bay Street, door to door, asking for a job. And nine or ten times, sometimes ten, we would strike out. But every week, we would go, catch the jitney, and we would go and we would hop on the bus and we would go door to door, go door to door, door to door, looking for a job. Being, you, know, you understand being rejected. They finally got, we finally got something, right? And you, you, you have to hold on to something. You have to do, you know, you can't give up. This is what I tell my children. You see, you know, you, sometimes, you know, you come out of school, people that you graduated with, um, um, in school with, Right? You, wow, this one went off to college, this one got a job, this one got straight. Here I am, you know, can't find nothing, nothing substantial. And the first job I got paid me $44 a week at a store on B Street. Wow. Right? $44 a week. I, look here, my time is shit me at lunch. <laughs> I was broke. You was broke. I was broke, but it just gave me more incentive. It gave me, made me hungry. The second job I got substantial was like sixty-four dollars a week. Mm. That's behind the case, you know, the rich, the rich place, right? Until the union stepped in. That's why I respect unions, right? And you, you, you have to strive. You have to, you have to strive. You join your little ASUS. You do what you have to do, right? And I tried with my with my two children to instill in them. You cannot give up. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to come your way. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going to see the foreigners come in. Not just the, 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 the massive influx we have and the situation we have with, with, with patients, right? You see where, like, your, your experiences where these people come in in their pretty shirts. Cause I, I mentioned it. I questioned the Minister of um, Immigration on the show last week in reference to this. When are we going to have um, full-fledged, qualified Bahamian, Bahamians whose parents have sacrificed? Like myself, like you, who you, who you, who, 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 and your wife who are doing it now, now with your children. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice to educate our children, send our children overseas to come back home, only to be turned away or, or be, to be overlooked, not given an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because persons that come here, that we have to train these people. You understand? Mm -hmm. so, 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 you know, when, when are you going to do the, the, the plan that they had put in years ago? You train the behaviorization policy where you train these people. I mean, you know, these people train you, sorry. 
and then they leave a certain amount of time to leave the country. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to see more. That he said to re- you know instances, report it. Make sure bring it to their attention. You know, more 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 light needs needs to be shown on that particular issue because mm-hmm. right now the continent has already been thrown down in relation to this illegal migration problem with and the shanty towns and whatever. And we expect for the I don't really care. Or to hear the prime minister um, speak or whatever any more initial. We need to see action. action. I with you. We need to see the I policies agree. to be implemented. We need I to agree. see them uh, as far as the the, the, the um, injunction has been lifted. Deal with it. We want to see action. But as far as that other particular um, um, elephant in the room, there are persons who are qualified who deserve those positions. Who, and guess what? We do have persons, behemoths, who are going to Canada. We do have our, our um, um, children who are not coming home. We, we are losing our Bahamians. Yes, we are. Um, and they're leaving the Bahamas as refugees, um, asking, what, what do you call it, in Canada on that status? They're, they're, they're going, our children are leaving this country, and mm-hmm. we need to look into that more to try and enha- to, to, to make it so that if they are qualified and they've earned those positions, through hard work and dedication, mm-hmm. they deserve it to get those salaries, to get the, the perks, I That's agree with you. Minute. Thank you, I'm Howard. Thank you so much for your Thank contribution. You. Thank you so much for your telephone call. Guys, right. you know what to do. Uh, we're going to take this quick commercial break and be back. You can be able to give me a call, 323-6232, 325-4316, or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. Uh, you guys are watching me on guardiantalkradio.com. Uh, Somebody just texted me, Howard, is that your baby that you brought in today? I told you she wasn't feeling well. She slept here the entire time in my arm as I rant and rave. <laughs> Very quietly, she used to that even loud mouth. But she's here with me, and her mommy just come for her. So we're going to take this quick emotion break. I'll be right back after this. The Foundation. The Foundation will be back right after this. Whether your business is in store, on the go, or both, let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customers' payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. J.S. Johnson Insurance agents are the best Reliable service We've been on the scene Protecting since 1919 J.S. Johnson Insurance has the test Always You're always covered me J.S.J. 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 J.S. Johnson Insurance Peace of mind This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. An exciting two days. Talk to me. Yesterday and today. <laughs> An exciting two days for me. I'm, uh, I'm always eager, interested, and kind of open to hear, um, you know, the views and opinions of my Bahamian brothers and sisters. Um, somebody texted me, how are you going to have more of these open line, man? I enjoy this. I love to hear 
uh, persons really being able to talk about their issues from a first-hand perspective. And I think it's important. Do we carve out a day to do that? Do you want to do that? Do you want to carve out a day to have this? And look, yeah, don't give me no jive and let your political organization give you, uh, you know, your talking points to come call on the radio. I mean, I guess we can't avoid that. But I want to have a real conversation about how you live in your community, how things go in your community. Huh? Let's talk about those things. Right? We don't have to call people name, my MP, this and that one, this and that. No, 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 no. Tell me about your community, what your expectations are, and how you are. If you want to do that, let me know. We could identify a day to kind of carve that out to really be able to chop that down. Two days we have anchored, for sure. That is that panel discussion on Wednesdays and Thursday, Small Business Thursday. So if you want to be able to identify how we can do that, I'd love to do that. Let's see if we can read a few of these texts, right? So it says, um, Howard, the government better not take Bahamian taxpayers' money to buy houses and apartments for illegal immigrants. Wow, that's bananas. Right? It says, Howard, capitalism is killing this country, and yet we don't want to talk about it. That's, that's real, right? Um, um, I think people look at socialism and this idea of being able to be liberal with um, um, your resources as irresponsible and sort of a taboo thing, right? So, so I'd like to talk more about those things. It says, Howard, I hope people see the value of the great Lincoln Bain. Ooh, this is bananas. So, Howard, uh, what was their excuse for making you redundant? You know, it's a fact that Hispanics don't like black people. I don't know. They didn't give me no excuses. No one, they don't have to excuse me. They gave me the letter. I told them I'm coming to work tomorrow. And I did so for 30 days. 30 days after they gave me this letter, the woman was crying in the room after I said, I said, Miss, you pray to God. You pray to God to find a way out of your country to send money back to your people. Many of your brothers and sisters jump fences. Manda said, I just was shooting straight. Because I didn't do anything illegal. I moved from Grand Bahama with my Bahamian passport and all my information to Nassau, which is the capital of my own country. These people come from over the seas with their foreign tongue, which I also speak, into this space, which I also do, for a job opportunity to exclude me. Bananas. That was crazy to me. And these things continue to happen. And no one want to take up the fight for the Bahamian people. I can tell you one thing. I gave a letter to a certain person within uh, governmental, with governmental authority. Watch me. Watch Howard in decency and order without being able to identify any particular name or person. I gave a letter that we all signed. Write up this letter, I type the letter, so forth and so on, went around, talk about some of the infractions that happened in the hotel, gave this letter to authority in our country. They come back to the hotel and gave the letter to the general manager. I promise you from here to God is the truth. They gave the letter that I wrote that represented the body of who we are as a people with our discomfort and dissatisfaction as it relates to what's happening with this transition. They gave it to the general manager. General manager, get rid of me, because I is the problem. But it couldn't be how it's a problem, because Malia is close. I can't get no amen. Let's see if we read this thing and go further. It says, y'all talk uh, too, 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 too much, but don't answer your phones. <laughs> so, where's your producer having a click? Let me read some of the texts. Don't fight me, right? Howard, is that your baby you brought to work today? Yeah, I told you the other baby was there. She left already. Say, um, Howard, the domes in Abaco, where the Bahamians were living, has been crushed like cake in a baby's hand. And no time. And now, we have to be compassionate with work permits holders and illegals. Time longer than rope. So Howard, please talk about her give, please talk about her give citizenship. If 
please talk about, I suppose, this, how they give citizenships that create these voting blocks that intimidate the politicians. Wow. Howard, what is so strange about people coming here with NIB number and work permit? When we tell children born in the Bahamas to one or more Haitian, Haitian parents that they are Haitians and must stay in Haiti until they're 18. Wow, this is, this is crazy. Howard, tell them stop telling lies and misinformation about Haitians working for minimum wage in Abaco or other family islands doing construction and high-end landscaping. These folks are earning $450 to $800 a week, sometimes more than that. Ain't no 250 minimum wage jobs around here. How would you need to let the Honorable Leslie Miller speak on this? Mr. Miller will tell you how they cost far more than Bahamians. Try him. He'll tell you. Um, somebody texts and says, actually, it was better under the, under the UBP. How do I read this? Actually, it was better under the UBP. Let me, take, let, me, let me take a telephone call. Calling you on the live is live. Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Grant. Hey, how you doing, my brother? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, boy, you gave me a good laugh yesterday, and you say uh, the text is too heavy. Yeah, yeah, the text, it was heavy. That, 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 that particular phrase. <laughs> yeah, listen, man, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. Grant, uh, one thing with Constitution, the Constitution, constitutional rights, sovereignty, et cetera, et cetera, right? What, what the BMP must have realized, and I realized this a long time ago, these things are just on paper democracy, all of these things, et cetera, et cetera. They're not gonna they're not gonna be utilized if you if you're not willing to fight for them. They're not gonna be given to you on a platter or by charter. As we see the weak, pathetic statements coming from some of our politicians right now. I heard the garbage, the BS from Mr. Mitchell, right? And uh he you know, one thing with being educated or you think or like you're thinking about people and you are trying to Gas like people with your influence in their external reality. And so when you read it, right, I was trying to find out where, where, where he lives. You understand me, Mr. Grant? Mm -hmm. And so that last texter who texted about the wages, she's totally correct. And so the question then becomes, why is it that we need to agitate in order to get the government to do their work? Why is why we need, Mr. Why is it that Lincoln Bean is presenting this crisis before the United Nations, so I heard him say he's writing a letter, et cetera, et cetera. Why isn't this being done uh, by the politicians then? Why is it nobody? You said something very important just a few minutes ago. You know, who's fighting for the Bahamian cause? You understand me, Mr. That's Grant? That's Yes, and this is scary. I hear. And then you see, you see the, embo the, 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 the migrant is coming emboldened. Now, let me share this with some people who are, who are not migrants. I hear some of the pathetic callers singing for their supper, mindless. I, you know, I even hate to say this. I wonder if they just read, because... What happens now is, let's look at this realistically. The Haitian, this, this movement by the particular migrant that, that represents, I, I agree with the call, the lady who talked about the people being educated and not being allowed to come in, in our country to spread the human capital, which I agree with. But then I'm looking at something that's existential to our sovereignty and our nation. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at, we are, we are an archipelago, and then we have sporadic shanty towns being strategically placed throughout the islands, Cat Island, the Haitian Migrants are the only demographic in all of our islands. I don't see the Chinese going in the bush and the Jamaicans going in the bush. No. And just, no. So yeah. why we, you know, this is, this is why I'm telling you so I planned out. I have a friend in the Defense Force who I met, but not, I mean, we, we, we met out by the, uh, the last uh, protest out in Russell Square with Lincoln being them, right? And what happened is he was telling me what it was doing mouth. Do you know that we are people that grew up in the mud and pigeon peas and in these shanty towns on the police and defense force? Did you know Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so let's face reality here. So then, why not the implementation and the recording and monitoring of these people? And if they're found to be fraudulent, dealing with fraudulent activity and facilitating migration, whether it be customs, immigration, police, national insurance, whatever, then there has to be some, re some repercussions. You can't just have the country wallowing and then, where are these people allegiance? See, I blame the government. Why we need to be agitating for the government to do their job? It's either you have law and you don't have no, no, no law and order. Where there's no justice, there's no peace. Now, you, they sitting back and painting a picture. Uh, everything is driven at the, at the behemoths. Nothing is being driven at this particular migrant. The government is losing revenue by allowing people to build without work permits. First, they should, have, they should be the owner of the land. And so they're allowing a lot of uh, city ordinances to be breached, and then they could be collecting money out of that. All of this uh, 
uh, is, a, is, a, is a parallel society. Electricity, uh, they may even have doctors now, and they could be having babies born without, you know, we have people born here with not being registered, et cetera, et cetera. This is just a look at, because they come from remote parts of Haiti, and they don't, they, they, you know, they have to pay to go carry children to school. So we're not looking at the whole socioeconomic uh, effects on the country. And so I, I was wondering how the PM could talk about democracy when he's not allowing it to happen here. It's, mm. it's only on paper. It's not in, in reality. Mm. And so they, they are willing to, to gaslight the, the mindless masses and talk about we don't have a crisis, a, a, a quagmire dilemma, whatever word. What really does it make it the truth? Really, Mr. Uh, 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 my brother, you, you, where are these people living? Where are it, they it, living? It feels like they don't live here sometimes. It feels like, uh, uh, but, but, not that they don't live here, you know. It feels like their allegiance is not to the Constitution that's supposed to provide opportunity and access for the yeah, Bahamian but, but people. Mr. Grant, could, could you, what I'm saying is, let me give you an idea. All right, let's say the money gram, the wiring of money. A cousin of mine told, cousin told me he had to send some money to Jamaica. Uh, he, he paid like 130 something dollars just to send. I mean, he paid like thirty-one dollars just to send like a hundred, just over a hundred dollars. I can't remember. Was it too much over a hundred? He paid like thirty something dollars just to send over a hundred. So I'm trying to find out: Do they have special? Do, do they? Have, I guess they have a di- diverse diversity in, in in the wiring fees according to countries. And I, I honestly believe they they doing this in 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 in, in uh, they they intentionally doing this. Wow. All right, but that's really a lot of money just to wire a hundred something dollars. All right? Wow. You get what that's thirty percent. That's a lot of money. No, but I, I can't remember the exact figure, but it was, I think it was over 100, but it was... It was That's it was a lot 50. of money. Yeah. 30%? But, wow. Yeah, but, but Mr. 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 Grant, before I go, I have two things I want to say. Why is it that they, 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 they can't see the, 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 the potential threat by these migrants settling on our outer islands? Then they can wait till it bloomed, it blossomed into what? You got Andrews now, you got... What's going on? How you, and then, what, what I'm saying is the Haitian calling the police for the Bahamians and the Haitians... Uh, telling people they can run them off their own island, man, this is so inglorious until it's it's yeah. pathetic. Yeah. And the, you know, from one pathetic statement from Minnis, not a brave. And I listen to some of these callers; they don't understand what the picture I just painted is a realistic picture. So all of this garbage about, uh, you know, that, what, 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 do they know about the word management? You can manage illegal migration by just having the right paperwork in place and knowing, using data to say how much we need and how much we need. And you, you don't monitor who goes and comes. This is all about the free-for-all. And at the end of the day, even with the capitalist system, uh, Mr. 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 Grant, you know what the stakeholder capitalism, right? Mm-hmm. You buy into that. You buy into this garbage. They talk about stakeholder capitalism, but the people and planet, man, these people in, they know people in planet, they're trying to get rid of you. Anyway, give thanks, man. You're, I you're, appreciate you're your telephone call, my brother. Thank you so very kindly for that. Um, uh, I always like when he got a get <laughs> when it escalates to him getting this. I always like that, right? Um, guys, let's just shoot straight. Um, uh, he hit something. Uh, I can take this quick commercial break and get back. But the guy, the, the gentleman hit something. He started to talk about uh, a lot of this language, a lot of this, the approach of what needs to be done is delivered to the Bahamian people. I wrote that down. It's driven to the Bahamians. So they say, we have to do this. This is how we have to act. We have to endure. We have to do these particular things. And it's not identified or even presented to the Haitian populace and community, which I think is absolutely wild. I said this to you before. When they were having conversations about human rights and rights Bahamas and what needs, what Bahamians need to do, I was just concerned about it. I said, you know, what's, what's concerning is that I've, I've grown with a great deal of persons of Haitian heritage. And a, a lot of the conversations that come out of that community is that um, the coming of age for a young woman is for a familiar family member to sort of, uh, I don't know, how to be able to be as decent as I want to with this. I said, unless and until you go in the communities with the language that you have to explain to them, this is not a part of the Bahamian culture. How in the hell you expect us to accept this foolishness? Let's take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. The the foundation. The foundation. We'll be back right after this. The foundation. The foundation. The 
It's a time of year again, and we have one to send you and the guests to Portland for the NBA VIP All Access Experience. We have customers can enter the win an all expense paid trip for two to see the Boston Celtics and the LA Clippers take on the Portland Trail Blazers March 14th to March 20th. Sign up or upgrade to Rev Trio Plus today to enter to win the NBA VIP All Access Experience to Portland. Rev, made for the game. Fidelity, we're good for you. With so much going on in the world today, only accepting cash at your business can be risky. Let Fidelity offer you and your customers safety, convenience, and the flexibility of a fixed or mobile terminal. Take it with you, on the move and on the go. Because business should never stop. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit us at any of our branches. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, the foundation with Howard Grant. Uh, that was our last commercial break. I see two telephone calls on the line. I'm going to read these texts, and then we're going to get to you as soon as possible in these last few minutes. Mr. Grant, when we speak, we need to make sense. In South Luther, the Disney project is going on and is in need of hundreds of workers. But how in the world is a married man or family or skilled man is going to the island and work for $12.50 an hour? An American bridge is paying a lot more. And the government is granting ISD and contractor work permits to bring in foreigners from Mexico and South Africa, which is ridiculous. You're asking persons to drive 30 to 40 miles twice a day with rising fuel costs for $12 an hour. Let's talk about those things, right? It says... Um, As we genuflect to the king and his successors every five years, we also genuflect to the system we find ourselves in. At the other end of those who come as professionals run interference by blocking young Bahamian professionals and finding space for friends and family and all the money spent by Bahamians to educate their children is wasted and most of them choose not to come home and their parents who have spent their money and their pensions to educate their children, Bahamians are being sold out on all sides. This is the lady who called about 40 uh, sometimes a week. Sounds like the Republicans who fought Biden against student loan debt in 2022 versus uh, over decades ago. Get real and see how many qualified Bahamians are rejected don't give me your 1970s account of struggle in 2023, please, and thank you. These are uh, texts that I'm reading. Imagine not being able to go into the casino in your own country, and your government, your own government, tells you, come celebrate 50 years of independence, LOL, PLP, and FNM, seem coin. I'm hoping in the next 50 years, neither exist. It's heavy what you're saying, right? Um... Let's see if I can be able to read one or two more of these. It says, Howard, uh, think about this. Your children and mine will have to compete with the children of illegal immigrants for opportunities in the future in our own countries. Scholarships, jobs, etc. Uh, call, I'll give you 30 seconds. You're on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Howard. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for holding. Get 30 seconds. Uh, I don't know that I can make any point in 30 seconds, Howard. But oh, this answer um, I believe that I believe that both of the topics that you were discussing over the last 10 minutes, when I turn in, are interlinked. 
um, immigration opportunities and, um, um, and, and wealth creation in our country. And I believe that if the opportunities were flowing um, for Bohemians as citizens in our country, I believe that the immigration challenges that we focus on primarily, um, being the, the Haitian nationals, I believe that, that that concern would disappear. How would? Because when you look at the fact that our country is a very expensive country to live and operate in, um, one of the most expensive components to business being labor, you would find that if we if we if we have the opportunities flowing to average and everyday behemoths across the country, we can use the immigration matter as a tool to empower both persons who are looking for opportunities and behemoths who need that labor component in order to develop products at the most affordable and cost effective um, um, level possible. And so and so and so the, the, these conversations, Howard they don't call for 30 seconds of, of discussions. They call for... Yeah, Anton, you got to call a little minutes. earlier. You got to call huh? a little earlier so I can give you some right. time. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming you. I'm just, I'm just highlighting that these are very um, um, deep level conversations that require back and forward interactions between yourself, myself, persons, and the public domain who is listening. But the immigration challenge that we are having, Howard, if we can simply address the Constitution and close the gap as it relates to Article 7 in the Constitution, if we can simply create the opportunities where, through our development and our ongoing development in our country, Bohemians get the first opportunities available and the best of the opportunities available, and not just the same group over and over and over and repeatedly, I believe how would that we would see a government give birth similar to the Salindan Pinland era because they had it right. Even though they didn't bring about the fullness of the square deal, mm -hmm. they had it right, Howard, in terms of um, um, creating opportunities. Because they for cast Bohemians. the vision, Anton. They cast Pardon the vision. Me? They cast the vision, so they knew the spirit in which yes. the, and the direction that it was supposed to go. I, I think I that's been that. bastardized that. over and, years. And, and Howard, I, they I bastardized the vision point. over years. Can, can you hear me, Howard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Anton, I, I gotta I, let I would, you go. I would, end, I would end with this point. I believe I believe with all my heart, Howard, that we have the right man in the chair, right? And Philip Brave Davis. I believe that I believe that he also has the perfect opportunity right now, now that he is Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, to bring about the fullness of that economic majority rule and empowerment in our country. And I believe that it's going to take some major shaking up in order for that to come about. We Thank flat out of time. Thank you so much. It sounds like a uh, Fred Mitchell recording. And today and every day, it's PLP all the way, right? <laughs> it, I mean, if that's how you punctuate your thing, I'm going to fight you, right? I do believe this prime minister has an opportunity to be able to right the wrongs of our past. I believe that also for the former prime minister, uh, uh, Minis, had the opportunity to be able to right the wrongs of our past, uh, the men before him. I also believe that uh, uh, the, uh, the prior prime minister, um, Perry Christie, who made indication to the Bahamian people that he made some mistakes and he will right the wrongs of our, his past. And yet, every single one of them, they fell down the exact same rabbit hole. Let's talk about these things and have a very clear conversation. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to have Dazzy in the studio with me. We're going to chop down a great deal of conversations about where we are, where we're going, and how we can be able to make some things happen. I thank you so very kindly for tuning in with me today and really being able to have a, sort of an open conversation and talking about where we are and where we need to go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 96.9 FM Radio. Howard Grant and your company with a foundation. I want you to stick and stay for Z Live with Chivago Lang right after this. I'll see you guys tomorrow, God spare, and I thank you again. Foundation. Foundation.